Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Cold Blue Light. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be going over a super simple way to save and load our game. And uh, we're also going to take a look at how to make our sprites not so blurry. So let's do that real quick. While we're, we've got our uh, our scene open, I'm just going to pick, uh, let's, let's take our school.png. Uh, if we click on it, and then up here on, on import, we can see that a button called filter is selected. So we're going to tick that off, and then we're going to press re-import. And now our scene is a lot sharper. And then we just go back to our scene here, and that's all you have to do for any images you import that look blurry. And I've went ahead and done that for all the art assets that we have in the game right now. Uh, let's take a look at what's changed since we were last away. Uh, besides cleaning up all of the sprites, I now have two new buttons on our Dialogs UI panel. These are called Save and Load, and their signals are connected to our Dialog UI panel so that we can access them via a script. And if you remember, we did this real easy by clicking uh, over here on node by the inspector and then pre pressing the uh, button that we the uh, signal that we wanted to connect in this case it's pressed and then hitting connect and then connecting it to our dialog UI once we do that it automatically creates a function inside of our dialog UI that looks for any signals being sent from that button okay that's super simple the other thing we now have done is our buttons have icons and this is also super simple every time you create a new button we'll use our blank skip button for example you'll see that it has a property called icon if we click here we can click load and then go into our resources folder and find an appropriate icon for it uh, skip doesn't have one right now but I've went ahead and made two really basic icons inside of uh, MS Paint uh, you guys can change these up later if you make it in Paint or in Photoshop or in Krita. Uh, you could change them to look any way you want to. So these are just super simple placeholder art for now. I guess you could consider it that way. Alright, so let's take a look at our scripting change. If you notice, our Dialog UI panel now has a new blank string called Save Scene. And that's because we're going to be using that to save our scene to a text file and then read our scene to the text file to uh, load the scene back up again. And this was super simple to do. So let's uh, go over it and hopefully I don't confuse you guys. So just like last time, we are exporting a variable. In this case, the variable name is called save scene as a string so that we can set this every time we instance the, UL, the uh, dialog UI panel in a new scene. We also have a new variable down here called file and it's set to file.new. This is an inbuilt function in Godot. And the only other thing we're doing now is on our two buttons save and load. When the save button is pressed, here's our signal we were just talking about, it will now create a file because there's not one there already in my case there is because I've been working on it but because there's not it's gonna say new file at the top here it's gonna create it for us it's gonna save it inside of a, a new folder that I've made called save because this is part of our organization just helping us to keep our project organized so that it's easier to work on so inside of our save folder we're creating a new text file called save.txt here's the path resources slash save slash save.txt that's our new file and we're going to write to this file so file.write and we're writing to it a string so file.store string and the string we're going to be storing is save scene and then we're going to close it so let's take a look at this in action inside of our uh, our school scene here we have our dialog UI panel and save scene is set to resource res slash scenes slash school dot t scene and it works just like our skip button does 
except we're, the scene we want to save is this scene. So we're using school.t singles. We're saving this scene so that we can now load it up when we press the load button. So let's take a look at the load button. All right. Down here on uh, load press is our function. We are opening the file once again because we closed it. So it's no longer open. So we have to open it again. File.open. And we're opening our save.txt file. And this time file.read because we want to read the contents of the text file. Below this we have a new variable set up called content. Content is going to look at our text file, so file, and it's going to get the text inside of the file, so file.getText, that's why we have this here. And now it's going to just call the getTree.changeScene, just like our skip button does, except instead of skipping to the next scene, it's going to uh, use the content variable, because remember we're setting the content variable to be the text inside of our save file and then we're going to close it and return it so that we can uh, presumably use it again I believe that's how it works. Th this code here I found inside of the documents I'm going to link it down in the description below so you guys can have a read for yourself. Uh, now this doesn't store anything other than the scene so it's literally really simple save the scene load the scene back up okay uh, it's not going to store any of our uh, choices that we made. We don't have any choices to store right now. So we're going to have to come up with a way to save those things, but we'll worry about them later. Right now we just want to uh, get a basic saving and loading system up. So let's take a look at our uh, game in action. If I press F5 to run it, we can see our scene runs like normal. Uh, we can still skip scenes. Uh, let's go ahead and test out save. I'm going to save this scene. Okay, I press the save button and I'm going to skip again. And here's our last scene. Now if we press load, we should load back up to the scene that we last saved at. And it's super simple, super easy. You guys should be able to implement this and uh, have a lot of fun doing it. And while you're at it, think about different ways that you could save different things to this text file. Like I said, I've linked below uh, in the video description uh, the document source that I've read all this from so you guys can go over it yourselves and be thinking about how you can save player choices. Now, now the only downside to how our setup is right now, I've, I've been thinking about this a little bit, is that all of our uh, choices all of our button mashes are tied to the dialogue UI so far uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing it could just uh, pose a problem later for if we want to have an inventory or something but we're not worried about that right now we're still kind of in the early prototyping stages so the next thing I think we should do is maybe work on uh, creating some nice uh, animated portraits and maybe flesh our story out some more I'm not entirely sure on that. It's something I'll think about as I go along the week. But I appreciate you guys for joining me today. I hope this helped you out. If it did in any way, hit that like button, share this video around, and don't forget to subscribe if you're not. Thanks to all you guys who've been subscribing to me over the past week. I appreciate you all for coming here. My name is Cold Blue Light, and I will see you next time.